Good morning to you morning, both. Morning, morning. What a world you've walked in, walk, walk <laughs> into. <laughs> So, um, Kerry, there's no, no secret of your, your complicated uh, family. Um, and it's, it is a complicated family tree, uh, brought up by four sets of foster parents. And, uh, and I look through the, 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 that part of your story this morning and I read it about three times and thought, oh, God, I don't understand who I don't like normal is. things, me, Phil, you know that. So, uh, so that's when I thought I'm just going to say, Kerry, tell us about that time. How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> Who was everybody? How do you all fit in? So, it, it's so complicated. So, my mum got pregnant, obviously, with me, and I was brought up by a gentleman who I thought was my real dad. He was my stepdad. Um, my mum left here when I was seven, and then she told me he wasn't my biological dad and that Ronnie was my real dad. And I'm the only family in my family with brown eyes. I'm an only child from my mum, and mm. my stepbrothers and sisters all had blue eyes, and they was older than my mum as well. So it was really complicated. So I used to walk down the street thinking, I wonder if he's my dad. I wonder if he played a massive... I think a lot of my downfall yeah. has been that attachment of not having that father figure in my life. Mm. So you... The marriage is the whole, whole lot. The whole lot, yeah. So, so you wanted to find out who your dad biological yeah. dad was. But you were quite sensible with all of this because you knew he had another family. Yes, my mum had an affair. So you didn't want to suddenly uh, unnerve no. this entire family, walk in and go, right, I'm here. Yeah. So you hired a private detective to just go and see what he looked like, yeah. take a photo and bring back some sort of information, not to act upon it. Yeah, well, I knew, I knew his name. I did my autobiography. I never put his name in there. And when I actually did The Jungle, I hired a PR company to stop it from going in the papers, anything like that. But it got to a certain point in my life, I thought, I just want a picture. I didn't know what he looked like. I, apparently, I looked more like him. I got the PR, I got a picture and a video of him, and that was it for me. Mm. Left it there. And that was he enough. was a married man, he had children. I didn't want to ruin, mm. you know, that family or break it up. So I, I, I stayed away. That's oh, very respectful. Uh, respectful. And in 2009, then, sadly, it was reported that... Uh, Eight. That he uh, <laughs> was in 2008, yeah. that he died, sadly passed away. Ronnie Armstrong was, uh, was his name. And so did that change things for you? Yeah. It, well, no one knew about him, and I got a phone call from my manager at the time saying, Has your dad died? And I went, Yeah, he died in April. My, my stepdad, he went, Then who's Ronnie? I went, How do you know that name? Well, the news of the world has said that he, he's died, and apparently the reporters have gone and knocked on my dad's wife's door to say, Your husband's had an affair, and by the way, they, he has a daughter. No, is it just. Jane Smith, it's Kerry Katona. Not only are now we going to destroy your life and between all your family, we're going to tell the whole world that your husband was disfaithful and he's also died three months ago. So this woman had just buried her husband. Yeah, so real and then, shock for everybody. Yeah. But actually, they all acted very kindly. Yeah, to they were and lovely. You were pretty much welcomed into that 100%, family. 100%. And I felt I was so upset for the wife more than anything. Thinking, oh my God, this poor woman. I'm destroying her life. That's what I thought. Yeah. And they rang me up and they were lovely. They were so nice. We want to meet you. And I met his wife and she held my face and she went, it's just like looking at Ronnie, looking at you. You look more like your dad than oh. any of them do. And Lindsay, Jason, Ian, they were all absolutely lovely. And then you found out that that wasn't where it ended. No. And actually, before your dad had had this family, he had been married before. He's a bit of a rogue, wasn't he? Had, <laughs> he had two other children, of which yeah. Jason was one. Yeah. yeah. So how much did you know? I mean, you didn't know anything about Kerry either. No, it was when my dad died, I come out <clears> that obviously Kerry was, you know, half-sister and obviously with them having the same family like Kerry's just said. I know Lindsay, Ian and Paul, I'd met them previous, but obviously we'd not stayed in touch because my dad had his own sort of family and I had my own life and so on. And then obviously we found out about Kerry and with everything that was going on, I just stayed, I knew, I just stayed in the background, let everything go on. You know, Kerry had a lot going on in her life and then obviously meeting the new family and stuff like that. So I just basically left it for a while. Mm. Um, and but I think, you, you, you text yeah, me on yeah, social media, was, didn't you? Yeah, it was about a year later, I let it all die down, let it all settle, because I've got family, I had my young kids, and, yeah. and I can see what, you know, what the newspapers and stuff can, can do. And I didn't want that bringing into, into my life, if you like. Mm. So I left it, and then on New Year's, Eve, New Year's Day, in 2011, I texted her basically saying, that, hi, Kez, hope you don't <laughs> mind, I'm your big brother. Um, and I was there. I won't go too much into detail about the text, but mm. straight away she texts back. And ever since, we, we have been texting constantly, really, yeah. for 
I think it's coming upon eight, eight and a half, yeah. nine years now. Why did it take so long between that first contact over social media to actually meeting up? Um, it was, commitments, basically. Same, Kelly's chock-a-block busy at the time. Through all her career, she's always been doing stuff. She lives down south. I live up north. I have my family, my kids. I had commitments with my kids because one of my lads was football and backwards and forwards on the motorway. Time. I was going through a little bit of a divorce. It wasn't good. So, so I had my own hassles. Had something in common. Yeah, I had my own <laughs> hassles. I had my own problems and, and sure. issues that I needed to deal with myself. And as I said, with Kerry being in the, the limelight, it was never about celebrity thing for me. So it's how never did you issue. orchestrate the meeting well, then? I sent, we sent her a text. I'm getting married in February. Um, a messy new girl, and I know life's brilliant at the minute, it's really good. And I thought, right, I'll send a little text. I wasn't getting any younger. I sent her a text, invited her to the, the wedding, wedding, wasn't it? And then, and it you know, it's a like a good wedding, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we thought we might as well make another one, you know. But so, you met before the wedding, didn't you? I mean, no, he hasn't got married yet. I haven't got married yet. I get yeah. two weeks. You met before, uh, before yeah. you yeah. said, right, okay, so now this let's. It's only our second time, our second time meeting because it was oh December yeah. in the Panto. The yeah. was when you decided, well, we won't wait until the wedding, which is yeah. in February, we're gonna, we're gonna do well, it now. It, location wise, it worked out yeah. because I was up north and he wasn't far away from where I was doing Panto, so I was like, come It's only an hour away for me, so as soon as she said she was an hour, you know, it was like, this is perfect time for us We're just to get looking to at this clip here. That, oh. that was the moment backstage yeah. in Pants when you first met. And there is similarities. I mean, you said at the beginning of this that you were the only brown-eyed girl yeah. in the family. Yeah. And look oh. at your brother's eyes. I mean, yeah. you've got the he's same... He's a better-looking one. You so he says. Same eyes. Same eyes. <laughs> same eyes. I'm older, got to get the looks from someone. Um, and this is, this is from your dad. Yeah. yeah. You both yeah. look like your dad. Mm. Yeah, definitely. You have both said that you obviously lacked that father figure. Mm -hmm. So what has finding each other meant for you? I think we're both very similar. Um, me growing up, I obviously knew that I had half-sister and half-brothers with um, Ian Paul and Lindsay. I was the same as any young kid and I feel it more now where I, I used to run a football team and I'd see the fathers on the touchline shouting for their kids. I never had any of that. Oh. You know, it was my mum worked it fingers to the bone to keep us going, me and my other brother. I've got an older brother, Wayne. So I missed all that growing up, so it's very similar in them feelings of not having the father figure there. Um, and then, obviously, I've got my boys now, and, and, you know, I'm so dedicated as a father. You know, my two boys are brilliant. You know, it's, it's so proud of the way they're coming on in life and so on. But I think it's just that connection of not having the father figure there, and we find something in each other, but we clicked, didn't we? We did, we got straight on straight away. away. Straight away. Yeah, it's nice. A, I got a quick a text off her mum saying, good luck getting a word in. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what her mum texts me back, so my partner texts back to Sue. So lucky to get a word in with, with me. Right? <laughs> so that type genetic. of thing. Genetic. Yeah, yeah, it's it genetic. Is. It just, it runs. Well, it's, it's lovely to meet you, that's yeah. for sure. It's and and Kerry, it's too. nice to see you as well. Yeah. Thanks for coming and sharing. It's yeah. a lo nice a positive story. It is. Yeah, Thanks for having us. It's a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you. Thank you very much.